Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. We are indeed grateful uh, to be able to come this last day mm. of 2023 and to share with you <clears throat> again out of the word of God. We say praise the Lord to all of the saints. We do honor the Lord Jesus Christ for his goodness, his mercy, and his everlasting love. We will say today, bless the year 2023. Mm. And we will say thank God for the new year 2024. We haven't made it yet. That's right. But we're going to look to him that he will be merciful unto us and allow us to come in. We honor the Lord Jesus for who he is and the things that he continues to do in our lives, the way that he makes, how he protects, provides, shields for us, and how he goes before us making a way. You know, the wonderful thing about him is he said that he is the door. And he's opened that door that we can enter in, find peace and joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. And we just bless him this morning. We honor our pastor yes. to Pastor Rogers. Always we're grateful uh, to be sitting in the presence of the man of God, whom God have placed in this part of the vineyard, that we might work and do what he has called us to do. So we thank God for those of you who have followed us during the course of 2023. We pray that you will continue to uh, support and listen to the word of God and to receive it for yourselves. So it is fitting that we have been studying God's holiness and ours coming to the conclusion of uh, our final lesson for this fifth Sunday. Our first lesson was our holy God, and that's the first thing we got to recognize, that our God is holy. He is all righteous. He is the great God, the God of all power, all wisdom, all knowledge. And we come to him because we have no place else to go to receive salvation. And then we have the lesson we are called to be holy. And we're called to be like our God. He's holy, so he's called us to be holy. But then we found out in our study that we cannot be holy unless we're empowered by the spirit of the Holy Ghost. We have good intentions. Mm -hmm. We have a good mind. Mm -hmm. but We don't have the strength to do it. So we have to look to the Lord. And when we were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, he declared that you will have power to be witnesses unto all men. And because of God's great gift to us, we worship him. That gift of worship is Jesus Christ. And we're grateful to the Lord for blessing us because through him, in Acts 4 and 12, it says there's not another name given whereby we must be saved. And it is that name Jesus, that, that king of kings, Lord of lords, that they were anticipating from Genesis, showed up in the gospel bringing us salvation. And he asked us for one thing, and that's that we present our bodies, live in sacrifice. And why? It says, holy for a purpose. God has separated us for his purpose. And as we study our lesson today, we will see the purpose of God in our lives. And it's not only for us, it's to God, and for others. So as we uh, do on Sunday mornings, we give it into our, in the hands of our pastor that he might take us further. We say praise the Lord and good morning to you. And we thank God again for this wonderful privilege that he has blessed us and he have allowed us to come again and to sit in your presence to give unto you what he has given unto us. We do honor our teacher, Willis Thorne, and we thank God for how God has blessed us through this year 
to sit and bring these lessons to you and to ourselves about the greatness and the wonders of God. And as always, we do ask your prayer that the Lord will bless and use us to bring down, to make the lesson simple for us to grab hold to and to understand the things that God are trying to show us. As our teacher gave us our rundown of all the different uh, lessons or topics we've had during the course of this session and the things about God and what God expects of us. And as God has called us out of sin into his holiness, there is a purpose that God has for us. And he was saying the holy, holy for a purpose. And that we glorify God in our life living. But yet we can't do it by ourselves, for that's why we're empowered by God's Holy Spirit to encourage us and give us the strength and the knowledge of how to walk this away. So the Bible says in Hebrews that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, God has already orchestrated a plan for our lives, and all we have to do is follow what he has uh, uh, directed for us. And when we do that, it is a short victory. It might not always be what we think or how we think it ought to go or what we seem it ought to be because God's his words and his plan and his thoughts are different from us. But if we just trust him and obey him, it'll work out every time. So as we go through this lesson, it show us sometimes God allows us to be in strange situations and strange predicaments. And it's not there to destroy us, but it's there for him to be glorified. And if we live the way God has directed and purposed for us to live in our condition, you will see the changes come about in the situations that we find ourselves in. So for December 31st, 2023, series God's Holiness and Ours, topic for the day, Holy for a Purpose. But our focus verse coming from Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. If in, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Lesson text is taken from Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 30. Truth about God. God empowers us to live a holy life for a purpose. Truth for my life. I will pursue God's holiness to fulfill God's purpose. Our icebreaker for this morning, choose an access challenge nation and see what information you can gather about that nation from the internet. Discuss ways you can most effectively pray for suffering believers in that country. Our lesson outline, Babylon demanded worship. King Nebuchadnezzar demanded worship. The three, Hebrew, the three Hebrews did not bow. I will choose worship, I will, excuse me, I will worship God alone. God calls his people to separation for a purpose. The three Hebrews took, took a stand, thrown into a furnace, bearing witness to the living God. I will pursue holiness to fulfill God's purpose. Father, it is in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. We come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, O God, for bringing us through the course of this year as we are about to embark on a new year. Father, we ask now your guidance and your direction as we, O God, attempt this new journey knowing that you've always been with us and you would never leave us. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us, O oh God, clarity on what salvation is about, God, and the things that we go through. It is not being exempted from things, but it's being encouraged and blessed and empowered to go through things. And as we go through, O oh God, that we will leave an impression on the lives that we touch as we go through. Lord, you told us in your word that there's a treasure, a treasure in these earthen vessels. Oh, God, that is the, for the ecstasy of you, that it will bring you glory and not we ourselves. So, Lord, bless us through your word that even though we go through, no matter what we go through, you have already given us the assurance, oh, God, that you are there with us. You will never leave us, and you will bring us through. So now, Lord, bless us that we stand still and we gird up our loins in truth, oh, Lord, that we allow your word to settle in our hearts, as David said, that I may hide it, that I might not sin against it. Lord God, that... When these trials and when these tests come, let us not, oh God, fail you, Lord, but bless us, oh God, that we may apply all this knowledge and wisdom and treasure that you've given us. Bless us by the power of your spirit that we're able to walk in, Lord, and to go through. But we realize we can't do it without you. So bless us, oh God, that even as we go through, we get a deeper understanding of who you are. Continue to bless, continue to have your way, that we will give glory, honor, and praise unto your name, that after we get through this lesson, oh God, 
There will be a change in lives, oh God, that they may see you moving and not we of ourselves. Do it for your glory. Yes. But in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Holy for a purpose. Um, I'd I, I like to uh, just draw attention to the uh, um, icebreaker where it says choose an access challenge nation. Well, you know, and then it puts in parenthesis, mm -hmm. parenthesis North Korea. I mean, you know, it's the third world countries that are living under some type of uh, dictatorship or some uh, type of leaves me, but living under that uh, autocracy where somebody is trying to rule above God. I would challenge you not to look at another nation. I would challenge you to look at the United States for where we are today. And the lesson that we are about to embark upon is really where we are in this world today, where uh, as in the book of Samuel, they desired a king when uh, the Lord said, you know, I'll be your God. Well, he is still saying the same thing, that he will be our God if we will choose to be his people. This lesson today about uh, Israel and uh, uh, the depravity of sin that it had fallen in and then God using a nation that was more wicked than they were uh, to judge them for the things uh, that they were doing. And so at the time, there was this king, Nebuchadnezzar, that God used to uh, judge Israel for where they were, and he sent him into Israel, Jerusalem, to besiege them and then bring them into captivity. But as Pastor was uh, praying, you know, the places where God allows us to go, the experiences that he allows in our lives, if we uh, would first recognize that when we are filled with the Spirit of God, we belong to him. And he allows uh, the things to happen in our lives that he might be glorified in the things that we go through or the things that we experience. Uh, when, sometimes when we read uh, of situations or occasions in the Bible and those who are called by God, we would look at it as though, God, why? Why would you allow this mm -hmm. to happen if these are your people? And, and listen, that's, that's not a far-fetched question because too often today when things happen in our lives, we get angry at God because we want to know, well, why did you allow this to happen to me? Well, I mean, listen, and, and we know that it happens regardless to whether you're saved or unsaved. But those of us that are saved, because we are empowered by the Holy Ghost, it's for a purpose, a purpose in God and a purpose for God. And as we see this lesson unfold, we'll see the unfolding of God's purpose in life. I don't care how bad things seem, but God will begin to reveal himself all those that are a party to what's going on. And that's the important lesson for when God allows us to go through. That we have to remain faithful and trust that God has all things under control. Amen. As it was be said in Romans that we present our bodies a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable unto him is our reasonable service. And that we be not conformed in this world, but we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. As teacher just said, when God calls us in, uh, out of, of this world of sin into a life of holiness to represent and live for him, there will be challenges that we'll be, we will be faced with to see whether or not we're going to remain faithful and obedient unto God. The Bible says, the Bible says, he said, Jesus said, if you love me, hmm. 
keep my commandments. In other words, that no matter what befalls us, no matter what challenges come before us, if we love God, mm -hmm. we will do what God say do in spite of what we find ourselves going through. But we must always remain focused on him. Remember when Peter was walking the water, as long as Peter kept his eyes fixed on Jesus, he did the impossible. We, he walked on his troubles. We walked on our storms. But whenever we get distracted and we look around and lose focus, that's when we start to fail in the service that God has called us to. In Psalm 73, it talks about Asaph, a servant of God, and who God had blessed. But what happened, Asaph looked around at the prosperity of the wicked. And he saw, and he saw what, how God was blessing them. For the Bible says, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And Asaph was disturbed. He was saying, God, here go people that blaspheme your name. Here go people that don't even try to worship you or honor you. And you're blessing them. And here we are, God, that we are your people, and yet you allow these things to happen in our lives. And I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Asaph said, now, but my foot almost slipped when I saw how you were blessing them, God. And all we're doing, we allow things to happen in our lives. Well, James tells us that when God allows things to happen in our lives, it is the testing or the trying of our faith to see whether or not we're going to rest in the promises of God. Asaph said, but what helped me, I made it back to the house of God. And when I got there in God's wisdom, in God's presence, in God's word, it allowed me to see what was going to happen to them. Because their, their prosperity is right here. It goes no further. He said, but I was just contained with you, Lord. So Asaph said, now since I've got this wisdom, I've got this understanding that, you know, this, this thing is only temporary, I can move on now. He's giving me hind legs, hind feet. That I will not slip on the mountains as I go through my troubles. So in this lesson, this is what it is. Because what God does, remember... The Bible says that this word must be preached to every nation. And we don't understand how sometimes it's going to be done, but God will choose us and put us in unlikely conditions, uncomfortable conditions, and allow us to be in situations that we don't like. Because we don't go there on our own, but God in his infinite wisdom will allow us to be there. That why? That we can uplift the name of Jesus. That we can show what holiness is all about. That we don't be transformed because of where we are, but what, what, what we do, we still will be transformed to him because we be conformed to him even though we are going through. See, sometimes we want to live holy and sometimes it's according to the conditions that we want to live holy. If, if, if things are going to be all right, if, if I fear out all right, then I'll live holy. No, God calls us to holiness regardless of what we go through. That we have to be holy no matter what the conditions or the situation may be. And if we truly love God, we will let nothing change our stands in him. So this is what this lesson is all about. We're going to be challenged. God called us to something, but we have an opposition. We have an adversary that's going to fight us tooth and nail to make us fall away from the promises that God has given us. But if we trust in God's word and rest in God's word, we will be established. And he will bring us through every time. I uh, certainly don't want to make this uh, lesson about politics but we have to see truth. It says that Babylon demanded worship. Mm -hmm. This is a wicked country that God uses to judge a righteous people. But the problem is when the righteous doesn't continue to stand for righteousness. When we say that it is for purpose, the purpose God has called us out, sanctified us, separated us, is that we stand in the midst of things and call wrong, wrong, and right, right. Babylon demanded worship because its king, which was wicked, demanded worship. I'm going to say something that will probably get me in a whole lot of trouble, but I'm going to say it anyhow. When we make parallels to what was going on in the time of the Babylonian uh, Empire, we are very much in that position today where you take one man, one man mm -hmm. who demands worship from those that are around him. Well, I mean, they... 
they, um, they use different words today. They don't call it worship. They call it commitment. They call it, um, you know, where he wants a people who will stand for him even though they know he's wrong. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, and, and, and they will call the wrong right. They will discuss it in a way where it seems or appears to be the right thing to do when they know it's wrong. You know, I, I, I question myself all the time. How do we live in a world where men of God can stand for the wrong that's being done? When we know that God is a God of love. God loved the world, and because of that, he gave his son, and we should worship him and nobody else. When we elevate a man like Nebuchadnezzar had elevated himself and built a statue, well, a couple years ago, there was a statue erected, and that there was a, uh, a requirement that we worship the statue. Listen, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, so it's not like this hasn't been done before. But the sad thing is, with all of the wisdom that we have received, we still don't see what's being done. When you hate your brother, you can't say you love God. The Bible asks, how can you say you love God, whom you've never seen, and you hate your brother that you see every day? That's not God. We have to love our brother. And our brothers is who? Every creature of God. Everyone that God created is my brother. And I have to love them. The Bible says, as I love, well, it talks about our wives, but it says, as we love what? Our own bodies. So we, we have to. We cannot fall to the worship of idols or false god or people. That's when we have the lesson that it says, be holy. Why? Because he's holy. He's holy. And he said this in, in the book of Exodus. You should have what? No, no other God. God before him. And when we put a man in a place where we will allow him to dictate to us what we need to do, and we know it's wrong, and we will uphold it, we're, we're worshiping him. We have, you know... Uh, I mean, we, we have not created an image, but that image is there before us, and we're willing to follow it. We cannot worship Babylon, and we cannot worship Nebuchadnezzar, but his name is no longer Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> but you got to see it, and you got to know it. We have to take a stand like the Hebrew boys. That's the purpose that God has called us. That regardless of what's going on, and the situation seems dire for us, that we will still stand for truth in God. You know, and what makes it so bad sometimes is we don't recognize the power and the authority of God. Even though Nebuchadnezzar was this great king, and even though he did great things in his eyes or for the people of Babylon, he never did realize that everything he got came from God. Mm. See, he thought it was of his own self, of his own strength, of his own power that God allowed, him, that he had these things. But God gave him these things. And we have to be oh so careful that when God bless us and allows us to achieve things, that we get beside ourselves and we demand the worship of other people and want them to bow down to us or everything we say, they're supposed to jump and move by that because of what God has given us. Be oh so careful that it's not far away from your fall when you get mm. in this kind of attitude and this kind of desire. Look at it. Nebuchadnezzar now invades Israel uh, 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 to take out of it this people because, as teachers said, because they were not doing what they were supposed to do, not upholding the rights of God. Well, in our country today, when we don't uphold the rights of God to do what God tells us to do, we are in prison. We might not be carried to a, another country, but we in prison and trapped right here in our own country. Now, so now, here, here they go. They take these young teenage boys and they, they bring them before the king. And he said he, he wants, never to never wants the best out of the nation. He want to groom them and he want to change them. That's what the devil does. The devil tries to change us from what God has called us to be. 
if you follow this story, Nebuchadnezzar even changed their names for, to the Babylonian name. Well, a lot of us change our names to suit the conditions of where we are today. No, we, we, don't, we no longer carry that name that we, was given us. We, we change our name to be recognized because we're now being conformed to what the world wants us to be. But these three boys, they had a different mind. They had a different mindset. And see, one of the things is that, that, I, have, that I always ask God to bless me with, with this condition, that God use me no matter what my condition, no matter what my circumstances or, or where I am, that I don't be so uh, uh, focused on what I'm going through till I forget about God. When these Hebrew boys were taken out of their homeland and brought into Babylon, they, I think they made up their minds that no matter what goes on, they're going to serve and praise the true and living God. They're going to make a stand. They're going to take a stand and do what God has called and ordained them to do. That even when ever, never to never tried to change them, they said to themselves, no matter what you do, no matter what we go through, God, the or, or king, we're going to serve our God. Well, it's down to this point today. No matter what befalls us, no matter what comes up, even when people take different stands, as teacher was talking about in politics and different ones, and they're threatening, they're trying to change our lives, change our opinion of things, that we take a stand in God regardless of what it costs us. That no matter what you say, even though I may be the minority, I'm going to stay on the side that God called me to be. Why? Because when God says I'm a winner, it doesn't look that way. It doesn't feel that way. And though I may suffer for the things that I go through for taking my stand, Still, I know that God is with me. The Bible says he'll never leave me, he'll never forsake me. Though I go through the valley of the shadows of death, he will always be there with me. And what God has begun within me, he will perform it. All I have to do is learn to rest in him and learn to apply what God has given to me. Uh, we read about this in the Bible days, but we in these days now. That God is looking for a faithful people. That God is looking for someone that will stand. God will look for someone that will declare his word. Even though it takes us out of our comfort zone, God is still looking for, looking for us to worship. Worship means our lifestyle. Our, because of conditions, our lifestyle don't change. We still live where God says to, say to us to live. We still speak what God says for us to speak. Even though it threatens us every day. I read somewhere, I think it's in Matthew, when God said, when you are brought before these people, take no thought of what you're going to say. For at that time, the Holy Ghost will give us what, we, what to say. And what we say will bring glory and honor and praises unto God. So we, we have uh, the situation where as Nebuchadnezzar takes uh, the best, which uh, would be an indication of how Satan would look at those of us that are filled with mm. God's spirit. He wants to take the best of God's and change it, turn it into what he would have it to be. And you said, why? Well, I don't know. Ask uh, Jesus because him and Satan had a conversation mm -hmm. when Satan tried to change Jesus into what he wanted mm -hmm. him to be when he came down out of the wilderness from fasting 40 days and 40 nights and Satan uh, offered him all of these things that uh, he would give him that wasn't even his to give. Uh, but that's how the devil works. He will offer us things that uh, doesn't belong to him in the first place. And, and the place that we're living today where man seems not to understand is uh, what, what I'm talking about. I, I, I want to draw your attention to... Um, uh, our lesson we're, we're studying it from uh, Daniel uh, chapter 3 but if we look at, at verse um, 12 it says there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego these men O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Well, um, you, you know, what, what this creates uh, as, you know, you know, at the time uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had made a decree after he set up this image that all would worship him. And uh, so he gave them a, a, a call that 
when you uh, hear this, all kinds of music, then you need to bow. Um, but when you take a stand, typically it is when uh, you are going against the wind. You know, or, 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 you know, the wind is against your sails. It becomes more difficult, but you know it's the right thing to do. Now, these boys have already been proven, but, but I, I want you to understand something here that uh, what's created. Um, if you, uh, I mean, just, just jot it down. If, if you go to... Uh, Proverbs 3, 34 and 35, it says, For jealousy is the rage of a man. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou giveth many gifts. You can give everything that somebody desires of you who is in the place of God and they're still not going to be satisfied. Jealousy is created because of what's going on at the time. Now, think about it. This king and his great army went into another country, besieged it. He brought them back to his country to be slaves. But yet of the slaves, and I mean, I'll use that word because we had some issues last week with one of our politicians uh, afraid to use it. Um, but because of slavery, we should be on the bottom of the totem pole. But Neb Nebuchadnezzar sees greatness in these four young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he placed them over all the affairs of Babylon. So how does the Babylonians feel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, what kind of atmosphere is he creating? He's creating jealousy, so they're going to do everything they can to come against them. And if you don't serve Nebuchadnezzar, he's going to do everything that he can to come against them. And because he's king and because he's already opened his mouth, you know, the mouth that says, you, you know, tells the lies and, you know, makes the decrees and, and, and they know they're wrong, but we support them in their wrong. It, it's bad. We are called for purpose. Preachers, please, denounce wrong, stand for right. We're living in a time where Christ is closer to come. And I mean, the Bible says, and in that day, we will call wrong right and right wrong. I think that's where we are. And we have to turn. We have to be like these Hebrew boys, even when you are faced with a fiery furnace. And that's what it is when you stand for truth. Because you may lose some things in the natural world, but remember, the word of God asks, what advantage is it to you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Because that's what God is coming back for. He's coming back for the soul of man. You know, they talk all the time about the soul of the country. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You better know that there's a soul in you that God will come to receive. Because it says in Genesis, and he breathed the breath of life into us and we became a living soul in Genesis it also declares that the soul of man will not always rest with him because God will receive it again to himself that is what we're concerned with that's what the Hebrew boys purpose was to show that their souls were more important to them than anything that the king could offer not the meat from the king's table not the drink from the king's table. They wanted to stand for the truth about God. Teacher asked a question one time um, about sometimes why God allowed things to happen. And, and, and what God allows to happen in our lives is that even though in our circumstances, in our situations, that he would be glorified. Israel was called to represent God 
and to show other nations how to live for God. We are called out where we are to live for God, to represent God, and to show other people how and what God requires of us. Teachers say even though it may cost us something, even though we may be different, even though we may be in the minority, but God, if we do what God says do and live the way God says live, we will be blessed every time. In Ezekiel, he talks about, in chapter um, 36, it was talking about how um, his people had blasphemed his name. In other words, when teacher said about us as preachers and us as being saved, God has called us to represent him. God has called us to be a spokesperson for an ambassador for him. And when we allow situations and circumstances and people to change us, in other words, we take a step back. In other words, we don't stand up for what's right. In other words, we allow wrong things to go on. Sometimes what happens is when our family members do things, we, we turn our heads. We allow it because it's our family. No, we're supposed to be right and just regardless of who it is. That we're not supposed to change what the judgment of God said. We're so always supposed to stand on God's word. And God is saying now, because you have blasphemed me. Mm. He said, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my glory. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, allow someone to stand to represent me and, 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 and show who I am. So in this situation, Israel has blasphemed uh, uh, the name of God, but God has chosen these four boys that his name will be glorified, his name will be seen, his name will be worshipped in what they're going through. So, and, and, and they remain focused, even though when the king wanted them to eat his food. Hmm. See, remember uh, when Jesus was on the mountain, when the devil was tempting him, and the devil said, look, all this I'll give you, if you just bow down and worship me. Well, they're saying to these three boys, I'm going to give you the riches of the food. I'm going to give you the, the best food. The other ones are not getting this, but we will let you eat from the king's table. That in hope that this was, hey, they will look around and say, hey, we, 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 we are exempted. We brought up so we can eat from the king's table. Hoping that it was transform them over to the Babylonian's way. But they said, no, we will not eat the food that you would give unto us. He said, I'll tell you what you do. Try us, O okay. king. Mm -hmm. Let us eat the beans and the soup and the stuff that you have and then compare us later on to your people that eats your food and see how we fare out. Well, see, God has a way of showing himself. If, if we just commit to God's ways, it might not be what we think or what, always what we want, but if we commit to God's ways, God will always show a difference in us than the world. That's why it says we are called to be holy. And when they brought these boys before the king and they, they went for this certain time and they ate the soup and the beans and stuff, when they put the, compared them to what the, kid, the other kids ate, they seemed to be more prosperous, more vigorous, more, more, more healthier than the others. And, you know, and the king was, you know, couldn't figure out this thing because these boys took a stand about what they were going to do. And well, teacher was saying uh, again too that Nebuchadnezzar made them rulers over the other Babylon, they were jealous. Mm -hmm. And see, what they, what they got to do, your adversaries, they got to find a way mm -hmm. to bring you down. They couldn't find no fault against them no other way, but guess what they did? They found a fault in their religion, how they worship God. And when they came in and decreed, you're not supposed to worship no other God, and you're not supposed to praise to no other God, or, or things of this sort. Daniel held true to what he believed. And what Daniel did, he didn't change his routine. He didn't try to hide that he belonged to God. He didn't try to hide that he worshiped God. He went before his window every day, and he prayed three times. And when they saw him praying, they said, now we got an accusation we can bring against Daniel. Can they bring an accusation against us for doing the right thing? Can they bring an accusation against us for standing up for right? That you honoring God? That you being a rightful judge? You doing what God tells you to do? Regardless of what the consequences may be? And we have to ask ourselves a question. Am I living according to God's word? The accusation can come to me because of my religion? I have to suffer because of my religion. But God, the Bible says that if you suffer for doing the right thing, happy is you. But if you suffer for doing wrong, then there's something different. So are we ready? Are we prepared to suffer for doing the right thing? Are we prepared to live for God regardless of what it may bring us, what the consequences may be? Are we still ready to stand up and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord? When we study closely, we find out that I don't care what position God puts or, or situation God allows you to uh, come into, there is always favor with God. I think uh, the uh, right uh, name is uh, 
Mel Melzack, who uh, these boys found favor with, just like uh, with Joseph in uh, his time in Egypt, he found favor with Pharaoh. God will always show us favor when we're put in the uh, midst of a challenging situation because there will always be glimpses of God where people can see if we just worship him in those glimpses. You know, we can't find those as things where we feel like God is, is, is left us all alone. We have to know that this is how God works, that he might be glorified in all that's done. You know, because these boys took a stand and they would not bow to the image, you know, they, they decided within themselves, you know, our God has called us to holiness. We're separated for the purpose of worshiping him and him alone will we worship. Well, I mean, you know, the devil will come and he will uh, present things before you and if you don't fall for it the first time, he'll come again. And so when those uh, Babylonians went to the king and said, listen, um, you know, these, these, these boys are still praying to other gods and they're not worshiping you. I don't know if Daniel remembered the prayer of Solomon when mm. Solomon said, Lord, if we fall into these diverse situations, if we can just look towards Jerusalem, Lord, be merciful unto us. Hear our cry. And Daniel continued to pray to the God of his fathers, the God whom he served. And as they brought accusations against Daniel, Daniel uh, and, and the boys still wouldn't bow. Well, I mean, you know, when you will, again, when you take time and just uh, not only study this word, but you uh, let it, overtake you in absorption that you begin to realize the power of God even when situations look like there is no hope for you. And so King Nebuchadnezzar after he was told said well these boys don't bow and, and listen I want to remind you these are the boys that you put over everybody. And we're already mad. You know what I'm saying? And they won't bow. So the king says, summons him, come. And because that's what the world is doing, summonsing those that, uh, you know, those that will stand for right and trying to get you to digress from where you are and become what they want you to be, whether it's by threat or any other means. And the king says, listen, I'm going to give you another opportunity that when you hear the music that you bow. Hebrew boys, because they took a stand and they would remain with God, they said, O oh, king, mm. I hear you, but we will serve our God. And uh, uh, the king made a decree, whoever doesn't bow will be thrown at that very hour into the fiery furnace. Well, that's what the devil likes to do, take us into that place where things are heated in our lives and we feel like there's no way to make it. But you know, the evilness of the world is this. What's typically all right is not enough for those who make a stand for God. So the king says, listen, bring me the most valid man, men that I have, and I want you, if these men don't bow to heat that furnace seven times higher, well, if the fiery furnace is already enough to consume you, what's the purpose in going seven times hotter? But because he is so against God, a God that he can't win with, he wants to show himself the Almighty. But the stand that we take for God will bring those around. You know, it won't only be like Paul and Agrippa said, I'm almost, no, you're going to be persuaded. <laughs> If we take the right stand and we stand for God, God is going to show up in our lives where others will know that he's there. So because the boys won't bow, he says, uh, throw them in the fiery furnace. And I'm, I'm always 
in love with this part of the story when it says, you know, the uh, uh, men that he called. Uh, they, now they they, <laughs> they they bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound them. They were free. And it says, and they took them to the fiery furnace that was heated seven times hotter. Consumed. Consumed them. Now, I'm thinking, why didn't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just turn around and walk the other way? <laughs> because there's a purpose that God has to show that he is God. And see, we, we, we know that if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego goes in there, they're going to be consumed. They go into the fiery furnace, but then something happens. The angel of God appears. And they're walking around in the fire bound. And the word of God comes through, not, 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 <laughs> not through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right. not through Daniel, but it comes through Nebuchadnezzar, this great king who has this great image. And he said, listen, did we not mm -hmm. cast three? He said, but I see a fourth one. Mm -hmm. So this is what baffles me. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> what he said. Yeah. And he looks like. And he looks like. <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. Looks like the son of God. I, I mean, it, it's just powerful. Now, Chad, I mean, now Nebuchadnezzar understands that if there's a God that's able to take the heat out of the fire, after you didn't raise it seven uh -huh. times, he must be God. Yes, he can do more than I can do. And so he, I mean, the Hebrew boy simply said, "Listen, our God will deliver mm -hmm. us." They they held to their faith, but even if he doesn't, yes. out of your hands, O King, mm -hmm. he will deliver us. When the Bible says, "He who seeks to save his life mm. shall lose it." He who loses his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And I think what happened, we get caught up on this physical mm -hmm. life of losing it. But our spiritual man is what is in jeopardy when we seek to turn away from God to save our physical lives. Well, see, as teacher was saying, you know, we want to kind of turn it around. You know, we might not go into a fiery mm -hmm. furnace today, mm -hmm. you know, and, but, and, but they're strong men because when we take our stand, they are some want to put us in situations or conditions where it seems like mm. we're not able to come out of it, where it seems like what they have uh, uh, thrust us into will destroy us. But if you look at it close, the same ones that accuse you, mm -hmm. the same ones that try to push you into this predicament, whatever it just destroys them. The ones that have blamed you, the ones that have accused you, the ones that have drawn all attention to you, you ever notice something start happening to them? They get sick, you know, Different things happen to them where it destroys them what they're trying to push you into. And the situation that they go into, it seems like what, there is no way you're going to come out. There is no way you're going to make it. Because some of us are in situations right now where the people are saying it, they're not going to make it. They're not coming out of it. It won't be long because this thing, no one has been ever able to withstand such a situation like this. And, and what happens is when it doesn't have the effect effects on you that they thought it should have. That you're not going around moping and sad and dragging like they thought you should have. But even in the midst of your situation, you're still praising God. In the midst of your situation, you're still glorifying God. In the midst of your situation, you're not crying mm. or complaining where you are. And everybody's still looking at you and they're wondering, how come you're not being destroyed? How come you're not being wiped away? And when they look, they can see this presence. You know, you ever, you ever seen uh, someone sometimes when they're going through something, there's, there's a glow about them, that their countenance don't look the same anymore, that there's, there's something different about them. And that's the way we look when we uh, 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 allow God to keep us in the midst of our circumstances. Where we're not falling, we're not bending, we're not bowing. There's a glow. There's something about you. Hmm. I, I, I just can't understand. What is it? Well, it is this treasure in this earthen vessel that is being uh, illuminated because of the stand that I'm taking because of what you're trying to do to me. And when we stand 
for God. When we stand, no matter what's going on, when we, we take that stand, don't you know it changes the atmosphere. It changes those ones that are around us. It changes those ones that are trying to put uh, 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 us in the danger. And this is what it says in Daniel chapter 3. Watch what it says now. After these boys went through and after the fire didn't burn them, after there was no smoke in their clothing, in chapter 3 and verse 27 it says, And the princes and the governors and the mm -hmm. captains and the kings counselors being gathered together saw these men upon the, whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an hair of their hair shrinked. Neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. who has sent his angels and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's words and yield their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that every people, nation, language, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces in their house and be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. So in other words, it's saying that when we take a stand and we declare the goodness of God, that no matter what is going to befall us and we take that stand for God, you saw the change that took place. This is why we're in some circumstances that we're in. This is why we're in some places that we're in. This is why sometimes we can't explain why this is happening to me, that we may take a stand for God, that we may change the whole atmosphere when we live for the Lord. When we don't allow what we're going through to cause us to lose focus on God, when we don't allow what is befalling us, that we start criticizing and, 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 and down-talking and, and losing focus. This is why God has us here. But again, it's not of our own power. It is of the power of the Holy Ghost that liveth within us. When we allow him to work, these are the results that will happen. All God wants is a willing person. God just wants someone to say, hear my Lord, send me. If we just present ourselves to God, God will do the work. The Bible says, he that has begun a good work in me, mm -hmm. he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says again, he that keeps me from falling. He will present me faultless. In other words, I'm not relying on my own strength. I'm not relying on myself. I'm relying on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says it again. For the course that is laid before me, of course, there's a course for us. And then we have to complete this course but again, but it's not of us. It is of God's strength. It is of God's power that will allow us to complete this course. But in this course, we are to glorify and worship God in every aspect of our life. So now, no matter where we are, in our sickness, you know, whatever we are going through, our finding, whatever, wherever we are, we are to worship God in the midst of what we're going through. And when we take a stand, hmm. those that are around us, even those that call us to go into it, when we take a stand, it would even give a change in their lives when we stand for the Lord. In Romans 12 and 19, Paul uh, reminds the Romans who they really are. He says, dearly beloved, and that's dearly beloved of Christ. It says what? Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So when we're put in these places where it seems like we are going to be unable to make it, if we remain in faith and trust God, allow uh, those things that God allows because, uh, as Pastor was saying, when you are in the midst of what you're going through, the purpose is that others might know that God is real. Mm -hmm. It's not just something we talk about. You know, I, I, I do, I watch probably too much news, but... You know, even our uh, news commentators uh, uh, tend to come against, uh, you know, religion. You know, they make it like it's a byproduct of what people, if people don't believe in anything else, then they fall to religion. That's how they categorize us like, you know, we don't have no hope, so then we hope in religion. No, God is real. Yes, he is. And, and that's the purpose we must take a stand. And that's why God allows things to happen in our lives that the stand that we take, God will then uh, revenge us out of those things 
that others might know that he is real. God is not going to put us in a position. The Hebrew boys were not going to be destroyed. But they were put there so that those of the Babylonian kingdom would know that there was a God greater than the gods mm -hmm. of Babylon or the king Nebuchadnezzar. Even though he had power, he had some authority, the, uh, all power belongs to God. And the Bible tells us whatever, man, whatever power man has, God has given it to him. He don't have any power of his own. You remember when uh, Jesus was standing before Pilate, and Pilate said, in, in, in other words, you don't know who I am. I have the power. No, Jesus said, listen, man. No, I have the power. You can't even take my life. Mm. Not as though you think you can. He said, but I'll lay it down because I got the power to take it up again. So what we're reminded of is uh, Isaiah 43 and 2. It says, when thou passest through the waters, mm -hmm. I will be with mm -hmm. thee. Right? Mm -hmm. So God says, I'm not going to leave you alone even though the waters seem to come up over your head. He said, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, that's where the Hebrew mm -hmm. boys were, mm -hmm. in the fiery furnace. He said, when you walkest uh, through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. The pastor was saying, they come out, what? You didn't smell no smoke? smoke. Hair wasn't singed? Uh -uh. They came out whole. That means on the other side of the trials, if right. we take a stand, uh -huh. We're going to come out whole. Why? Because we're giving glory to our God and other people who are around. Now, when the wicked <laughs> tells everybody. Right. That's right. Huh? When the wicked say, listen, the God of Shadrach, mm -hmm. Meshach, if you serve anybody. Now, 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 wait a minute. You wanted me to serve you. Now you declaring if you serve any other God. Girl, we gonna stand. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to take that stand. He says, neither shall the flames kindle up on thee, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. God says, for those that love me, those that take a stand, I will give. I gave my son for you. <laughs> I gave my son for you. My only begotten son. That's what God is willing to give for us if we take a stand for him, that the world might know that the God that we serve is a true God. Yeah, they may make it sound like, you know, we're so weak that all we can do is fall back on some religious, you know, they, they try to make us all feel like we're, we're just <laughs> inferior, you know. No, we serve the God of gods. He has all power, all of it. You know, he declared it. And, and listen, I, I don't know who can challenge what he declares, right? All right. You know, I think, I think was, was it Peter and James says, who, who, who I mean, yeah. our arms are too short. Too short. The box with God. And let me tell you, you can fight all you want. You're not going to win. God will. God will bring us through every time eyes are on us. We have spoken and we've said a lot of things. Now the world want to see whether or not we're going to live up to what we say. Because our holiness is not only for us. Mm -hmm. It is for those that are watching us also. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 at verses 2 and 3, for ye are our epistles, yes. read yeah. of men. In other words, mm -hmm. not written with ink and pencil, mm -hmm. but written in our hearts. People may not read the Bible, people may, may not go to church, but they are watching us. Even people that don't like you hmm. are watching you to see whether or not you're going to live up to what you say. And when you live up to what you say, they'll be saying, there's something about you. Mm -hmm. There's something. I don't know what it is. There's something different. And even if you're out of place sometimes, they'll say, you don't belong here. Mm. You, you, you shouldn't even be here. Yeah. They recognize yeah. the God that is in you. So when we live up, so, so whenever we are going through, no matter what our condition may be, live holy. Let people see God in you. Don't let the situation get the best of you. You get the best of the situation. That you may allow God to rise up in you that God may be seen. Even in your suffering, mm. even in your, your, your down moment, still minister to others. Mm -hmm. Even though you're going through, minister. 
That's how you live holy. That's how people will see God moving and working in our lives. Father, it is in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Your name, Lord Jesus. I just want to say thank you, O oh God, for opening up our understanding, giving us a clear picture of who you are. Even when the Hebrew word said, Lord, that, O oh King, that you will, he will deliver us. Mm -hmm. One way or the other. So, God, I'm accepting with whichever way you deliver me, for I will be delivered. You may deliver me unto eternal glory, mm -hmm. or you may deliver me out of this situation to, go, to maybe face something else. But whichever way, God, yes. I'm going to rest in you. Because, God, you know what's best for me. Now, Lord, bless us that we stand. Bless us that we declare your name as these days draw closer to your coming, God. Yes. Bless us that we take a firmer stand for you, O oh God. It may cost us something. But whatever it costs us, God, you will always give us greater than what we've lost. So, Lord, bless us that we rest in you, that we study your word, that we hide your word in our hearts, oh, God, that not just to have it there, but that, God, when these things present themselves unto us, oh, Lord, we may use your word, God, to give us the strength, oh, God, that we need, oh, God, to live in these situations, in the times that we're in. Oh, Father, I thank you for calling us. I thank you for using us, oh, God. And bless us, God, that we don't blaspheme your name. Bless us, oh God, that we let your name rise up within us, oh God, that we walk according to your purpose and according to your, oh God, direction in our lives. Yes, God, we may fall sometimes, but bless us, oh God, that we repent, get back up again, oh God, to let people know how merciful you are, how great you are, God, and God, that you are true and a living God. They're not going to always, they're not going to see you per se, but they will see you in us. So now, God, as you've called us, Bless us that we represent you. In whatever situation you allow us to be in, as Paul said, bless us we take every opportunity to let you be seen in whatever we find ourselves going through. Bless Do it for your glory, for your honor. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now henceforth and forevermore in Jesus' name. And all God's people say together, Amen. Amen. You know, when Pastor, just before he started praying, he was talking about us and where we belong. When we truly love God, um, you know, we don't have the strength of our own to stand mm -mm. without the power. That's why we're empowered with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't remember whether it was in uh, his preaching or maybe the last week's lesson. He reminded us of uh, uh, Peter. You know, when Peter said, I, I won't deny you. But people know whether you've been in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When hmm. Peter tried to uh, say right. he didn't know God, right. they said, uh -huh. oh, no, we know you. Uh -huh. Your speech gives you mm -hmm. away. So when you're truly standing for what's right, you're going to say the right things. You're going to do the right things. And they said, no, we know you were with him. You've been with him because it, it's a giveaway mm -hmm. the way you carry yourself. Well, it was a giveaway with the Hebrew boys. It's a giveaway with all of those of us who are able to stand, not by our own power, but by the power that we're empowered with through the Holy Ghost. We have been blessed through the course of this year to have many powerful lessons Amen. that God has allowed us to study. And we hope that, you know, those of you who have been blessed by following us and by sharing the word of God, we'll continue to follow as God continues to bless us with the illumination of his word. And that, you know, he gives us what we should share, not that we share that what we want. Because this is all about bringing people to the knowledge of salvation, people coming to the Lord before today, an hour too late. So, in our closing, we say a happy new year. As God uh, will bless us, we will see you after the course of the new year. Those of you who are free, on tonight we will be having a watch night prayer. Starts at 10.30. Starts at 10.30. If you would love to come be with us as we bring the new year in, there was a time in our lives where <laughs> we, would, we would bring it in a different way. Yes, sir. We would be where some of you are planning to go right now. <laughs> That party, whether uh -huh. it's in your house or in a club. Listen, I'm not, you know, we did it before. Right, it but God cleansed us. He changed us. He saved us. He separated us for a purpose. We are grateful that he has blessed us through the course of the year. 
And if God is so merciful to allow us to come into the new year, we want to come in calling his name. Our doors are open. Come be with us as we pray in the new, out the old year and in the new year. And we give God praise and glorify him for the many blessings that he's allowed us to experience this year. We say peace to you. We love you. And we hope to see you as God would allow on next Sunday. And we will continue in the word of God and hope that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. We say amen.